Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we were discussing packing fraction of uh, bimodal distribution. So we have bimodal distribution of particle size and we obtain two equations uh, depending on two extreme conditions. One where we have coarse particles going into the fine ones and the other when fine particles are going into the coarse one. So we had two equations, let us write down that and then we will uh, plot those equations. So for the first case where we had fine particles going into the coarse, we had P, uh, Pf apparent or which is packing fraction effective, it is given by this relation, where Pfc is the packing fraction in which the coarse particles are getting packed and Pff represents the packing fraction in which the packing, the finer particles are getting packed. So this is for the case where fine into coarse particles and the second one was coarse particles going into fine and for that we had a relation like this Pf, this came out as a function of Xc where Xc is Vc by Vt. So what percentage of coarse grain exists with respect to the fine grains or the total number of grains. So this was Pf fine here Xc is a variable, it will change, it can change from 0 to 100. So this is the relation that we had uh, obtained in the previous class. Today we will see how will the plot look like, uh, where we change on the x axis, we will have fraction of coarse grains and on the y axis, we will have the packing fraction. So let me take a couple of color chalks. As I said, on the y axis, we have packing fraction effective or apparent. And we will make another assumption so that we can put in exact numbers, and that is that both fine and coarse pack in FCC type structure, meaning they will have uh, 0 0.74 packing fraction. When we are talking only about the packing fraction of fine or packing fraction of coarse, then it will be equal to 0.74. On, uh, on the x axis, we will have, here we will have percentage coarse particles. So here it will be coarse, here it will be fine that is 100 percent fine and we are going from here to here. So, it is percentage fine, percentage coarse increasing. So, percentage coarse particle increasing. Now, when I say percentage coarse particles, you have to be careful. What is this? Is it Vc by Vc plus Vf or Vc by Vc plus Vt? So, as it turns out, it has to be Vc plus Vc by Vc plus Vf and not Vc by Vt. What is the difference between Vc, uh, Vc plus Vf and Vt? In the Vt, you also have the volume of the pores. So, we are not taking into account the volume of the pores. We are only concerned with the volume of cores with respect to the total volume of cores plus fine. And we will see again why this is a more meaningful uh, x axis or the parameter to take on the x axis than Vc by Vt. In the equation, if you see, we have Xt it is Xc which is Vc by Vt. So, it is a little different. However, it will, we will still be able to plot this. So, let us say when you have only the fine particles and only the fine, uh, coarse particles, what happens at that time? So, at this point, we have only the fine particles. So, here you will have a packing fraction of 0.74. We know this and in the other extreme, we have only the coarse particle so, even here we will have 
there is no variation in that or there is no discrepancy about that. Now, we know that in the fine when we keep adding the coarse particle at particular uh, percentage or at per certain range you will see 0.932. Remember we uh, even you have all the fine particles filled in the coarse uh, pores then you get 0.932 and when you fill in uh, coarse particles wherever it is possible in the fine particles then again you get 0.932. So, the maxima in both these cases maximum So, it represents the same point where you have you can say when you look at it there will be coarse particles all around and in the pores there will be fine particles. So, you can reach it either way you have initially to begin with only the coarse particles and in the pores you begin filling the fine particles or the other way could be that in uh, you start with all the fine particles and you replace you remember those are spheres of particles and pores with coarse particles, but eventually you will reach a re, uh, saturation wherein you cannot put in any more coarse particles and therefore, it will that such particular situation would be when the coarse particles are packed in their maximum efficiency and the pores in effect the pores are the where region where fine particles are getting filled. So, let us see where this will be. Now, in this when we are increasing the coarse part uh, from the fine to the coarse, so we are adding the coarse particle at the maximum let us say this is 0.932. So, we are monotonically increasing the fraction of course. So, we can assume a straight line relation and it will be you cannot add any more coarse particle to this. Over here you have you started with coarse particle and in this you keep adding the small fine particles that you have. The very small particles start to fill into the pores and then eventually this will also reach a value of 0.932. So, here this represents in effect our let me give a equation number to that. So, this will if it is this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Then the first one is fine into the course and therefore, this is our equation 1. You have start with completely coarse and you are adding fine particles and this is when you have completely fine particles and you are adding coarse particles. So, this is equation 2. Now, let us look at why V c over V t would not have been a suitable choice. Let us look at the ratio of V c by V t at this point. At this point, we have completely filled all the regions where coarse particles could have been. So, here you have coarse particles all around or wherever the, it can be and therefore, it is in the maximum efficiency which is 0.74. Now, beyond that the fine particles are going only into the pores and therefore, the ratio of V c by V t remains constant equal to 0.74. So, V c over V t is equal to 0.7 is equal to constant in this range and that is why V c over V t would not have been a proper choice for this region, because the, the total number of uh, the total fraction of coarse particles remains constant in this region, you have increased the coarse. So, you have the, the maximum amount of coarse and over here when you go over there the fine particles are decreasing. Uh, so, there is one mistake I have done over here which is this is where you have 100 percent coarse and this is fine. So, just one correction make to your notes. So, I have written here correctly it is percentage course. So, this is this should have been 0 percent course which means all fine and here it is uh, 100 percent course because we have increasing the percentage course. So, just a small correction over here and with that now you see that uh, 
over here you have the maximum concentration of course that can get into there and you are not increasing coarse particle as you keep moving over here you are only increasing or actually decreasing the fine particles you have some percent percentage of fine particles over here and it is decreasing and that is why vc by vc plus vf will change but vc by vt will not change and that is why this vc over vt is not a suitable parameter So, few more, uh, this is a very involved plot, there are a lot of things that we can uh, extract out of it. Uh, one first of the thing is that although we have taken it for a special case where we, where the fine and coarse are getting packed in the FCC case F or the FCC structure, you can have any other, you can have BCC, you can have loose random packing, you can have close random packing for one of them and a different one for the fine one or the, uh, in the fine one and that way you will have different values to begin with but the overall form of the plot would remain same that is at particular percentage of course you will reach the maxima and that maxima would also represent when you have when you have been adding fine particles into the course so both of them will eventually reach the same structure and you will have the same value at the max the value the exact value may change and we will actually look at one problem one uh, one relation in the example problem to find out how to find x c with respect to what will be the maximum value. So, this is some particular critical percentage of course. And this corresponds to some critical x c critical. Th both of these are not same thing, but for this per percentage course critical, you will have a critical x c value and we will see how to get this x c value. And this is uh, how usually your plot would look like. Now, this is what we have assumed or we have drawn assuming a perfect packing for uh, at each and every point in the, uh, in the whole compact. But uh, let us say we are when you are actually doing it, you know that the packing fraction it can be anything, it can be a loose random packing or it can be a coarse random packing or it can be, uh, or it can be uh, FCC, BCC, anything. However, if we are actually doing it, would you really see a straight line like this all the way and then coming like this? Actually no, what you get is something like this you may get different plots and what will be the difference why you would get 1, 2, 3 or 4 different? It will depend on the diameter fine to diameter coarse. So, th in this direction it is this value is decreasing. So, as the ratio becomes much larger or basically uh, no, the particle size becomes very, very different, you will approach the ideal curve. But even in the most, uh, in the case where you have very large difference between the particle, you would still not see a very close match to this. In fact, the greatest difference that you will see are in these regions. And this happens because of what is called as edge effect. So, let us see what is this edge effect. Edge effect is saying that you have some coarse particles and around it there will be some fine particles. But because some of these particles you are trying to fill very close to the coarse particle, the packing near very close to these coarse particle is not as good as it is a little distance away and this is called the edge effect. So, basically when you are very close to the edge of the coarse particles, the packing does not reach the optimum value. 
So, what I am trying to convey here is that there are lot of pores as you get closer to the particle surface. So, what I am trying to convey here is that if you look in this region, there are lot more pores. And if you go away from then less pores. So, this is called the edge effect. When you have a large coarse particle and around it you want to uh, pack fine particles, then near the edge it does not, it is not able to get packed as efficiently as it gets packed away from it. Whenever there is a surface, it causes that surface, the existence of that surface causes the particles to not get packed as efficiently. And this is why it is termed as edge effect, because there is an edge or a surface that leads to this inefficient packing. And this is why you get a larger deviation in this kind of region. And that is what you, that is why it leads to overall deviation from the ideal curve. So, this is how a bimodal grain size uh, particle size distribution uh, looks like and their packing looks like. So, now let us move on to uh, something a little bit more complicated. So, so far we have looked at bimodal. Now, what about if we were looking at a quaternary distribution? We will not get into the detail, but just qualitatively and not even qualitatively just look at some result what people have obtained for quaternary. If you go with a quaternary and uh, in the most efficient way people have shown that if you have the diameter ratios something like this. then you get uh, relative volumes for the spheres of these sizes something like this. So, this is 10.2, this is 23.0 and the last one is 60.7. So, this is the relative volume and these are the relative sizes. So, let us say if I take 1 millimeter, this is 7 millimeter, this is 38 millimeter and this is 316 millimeter. In this ratio, if you take the four different uh, particles and uh, when you have a volume like this and this volume is for the optimum condition where you get maximum packing fraction. So, when you have volume ratios like this, so 6.1 percent of this, 10.2 percent of this, 23.0 percent of this and 60.7 percent of this. then the max, the best packing fraction that people have achieved is 0.951. So, this is the apparent or effective or in the optimized packing fraction for the quaternary distribution. You see from when we had mono, uh, mono sized diameter, mono diameter particles, then we the best we can get is 0.74. When we get to bimodal, we get 0.932, for the quaternary we get 0.951. So, that is how the particles change or the packing fraction efficiency changes. Now, the question is if you had a continuous distribution, would you expect a better packing fraction or a worse packing fraction? So, so far we have said when we say bimodal, so it is there just two grains. If we have quaternary, so then they have added two more peaks over here. But now we are saying instead of having these distinct distribution, let us say if I had a continuous distribution. So, it so happens that continuous distribution is somewhat better than your mono size distribution, but it does not yield much better than what you would get by ternary or quaternary distribution or ternary or quaternary model uh, by quaternary distribution of the particle sizes. In effect, what I am saying is that when you have this, then the packing fraction may not achieve, may not reach as high as 0.951 value. It may get better than 0.74, but it may not get better than 0.951. However, there is another important aspect about the continuous distribution and it is that if this distribution is very wide, then it is better in terms of packing fraction than if you had a much more narrower distribution. So, if you have a very, very narrow distribution, it will start to approach something like what we know about mono distribution or the mono, uh, the single sized particle size distribution. 
However, when it is much wider, then it becomes much more efficient and gives a higher packing fraction. So, let us get back to the slide and see what we have learned so far. So, we, uh, we looked at mono size sphere packing, we looked at what is regular packing versus loose packing, we looked at param uh, packing parameters like number of particles per unit volume and number of particle contacts per, per bulk volume. We looked at bimodal packing, the two extreme cases and the plot for it is also shown over here. So, we assumed that the particle diameter ratio d large to d small should be at least greater than 10. And the reason for it becomes clear when you look at this plot. On the y axis you have a theoretical density which is equivalent to packing fraction and on the x axis you have particle size ratio. So, here you see that this uh, theoretical density or the packing fraction reaches its optimal or saturation value somewhere beyond 10. So, at this value it reaches its optimal value and that is why we said or we assumed that the particle size must be greater than equal to 10. So, from this plot it becomes clear the value, the importance of that value 10. We also looked at quaternary packing, we just looked at the optimal condition people have obtained and we saw it was close to 0.951 and we also discussed what will happen in continuous distribution, is it better or worse. So, these are some of the aspects we have looked so far. Next, let us look at what is the effect of powder shape and roughness on to the packing fraction. So, as you can easily expect and guess that particle shape and roughness, uh, roughness we, what we mean is not the microscopic roughness, but the roughness caused by the shape change in the particle or morphology change in the particle. So, the particle shape and roughness also strongly influence the fractional density and on here you are given some different kinds of particle shapes on the x axis in this plot and you can see this is a much more symmetric or in terms of the roughness related to morphology it will has much lower roughness and if as you keep changing the symmetry and the in effect increasing the roughness you see this is the relative density of the packing fraction. So, over here it is 0.7 although it is not very visible. So, it is 0.7, this is 0 0.6, 0 0.5 and 0 0.4. So, this is decreasing and it can change very vastly or, or it is very sensitive to the particle shape and morphology. Not only that, even the aspect ratio of particles can change the overall uh, the packing fraction. So, again on the y axis you have the packing fraction. So, here it is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 on the y axis and for simplicity a cylindrical fibers were taken as particles and uh, they were try and uh, people have done trying to pack it. So, here you are increasing the L over D meaning you are increasing the aspect ratio. So, you can see how the theoretical density is continuously decreasing. So, over here when you have almost uh, flat or very small aspect ratio meaning they will be of the same order, in that case you get the best packing fraction over here. And as you keep changing the length or increasing the aspect ratio, it drops, it drops to even to very as low value as 0.1. So, this is uh, how low you can get or how low this can cause the uh, packing fraction to decrease. Now that we are talking about it, let us also look at the sum of the simple shape and what is the powder density in the sim, uh, untapped and tapped condition that you will obtain. Just let us look at the number to get a feel of what we are saying. So, let us say this is some powder shape and if you take it in as it is condition, we will have some powder density. And then you remember something, this is equivalent to what uh, will be the loose condition and if you tap it, then you will get some dense, dense condition or rearrange after rearrangement and that will be your tap density and we are talking in relative, uh, in the relative terms. So, here let us say we take spherical powder, so something like this, you have very, very spherical powder and if you look at the powder density 50.4 percent of the true density and after tapping it increases, so it gets to 59.4. So, 
So, tapping is always necessary to get the right condition before you start compaction. Now, we let us get to some irregular shape, something like this and it suddenly drops to 25.8, 25.8 percent of the true density. It can improve a little bit after tapping, so it gets to something like 35.2. Now, if you make it just two dimensional, something like this, so it is now two dimensional a flake kind of structure and this has the poorest packing density something like 4.5 in as it is condition and 7.8. So, even after tapping it does not increase to a very large value and it remains at 7.8. So, this again tells you how the powder shape and morphology plays a role or is important in determining the overall uh, relative density. So, let us get back to again our slides and look at another important aspect agglomeration. We saw that uh, in the some micron alumina you get 0.3 density and that we said is because of agglomeration. So, agglomerated particles would always reduce packing density because of irregular shape. So, although the individual particles may be spherical and uniform in shape in shape and size. However, after agglomeration it can become very irregular. You may have all the particles sticking to each other and become giving it a overall irregular shape. Cohesive forces cause agglomeration and this force is measured in terms of angle of repose. Now, that we are talking about anglo agglomeration, so we should also be aware of how to measure if there is any agglomeration. So, there is what is called as angle of repose which measures or which uh, uh, which can tell you how much agglomeration is taking place. So, just uh, take a look at again what is the angle of repose, it is not it is nothing very uh, difficult to understand, it is just let us say you on a surface you have powder, then because of its flowability which again depends on the agglomeration and other characteristics, it will form a heap and this angle that you form is called the angle of repose. So, this decides how much agglomeration is taking place. If you have a free flowing, flowing particles, then it is very small, not very small, but uh, uh, to the lower side. So, it will be usually 38 degree for free flowing particles and if you are if you keep increasing the agglomeration or it becomes very cohesive then it increases the angle of repose increases meaning it is not able to flow as smoothly as before and it increases to something greater than 45 degrees. If it is that is the if the angle of repose is greater than 45 degrees you can say there are cohesive forces and there is agglomeration taking place. So, that is the agglomeration and if ever you have agglomeration and you want to get rid of it, one of the best way to de-agglomerate is to either dry it, mill it or pro uh, provide some surface treatment. You, there are, there you can even put it in some uh, proper solvent which can ensure that the particles get de-agglomerated. So, these are some of the methods to get de-agglomeration and uh, towards the end we have an example problem. So, we will uh, take, uh, take a look at this example problem in the next lecture. The again like I promised earlier, this is about calculating x c at the point where you have the maximum packing fraction and that maximum packing fraction you remember is a part of both the curves. We had two equations and we draw uh, equations and we draw a plot for each of these equations. So, this x c belongs to both of the equation and the plot. So, that is the hint I am giving, you try it on your own and we will solve this equation in the next class. Thank you.